In his dying moments on Calvary, Jesus says these mysterious words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you ever wondered about those words? Was Jesus really forsaken by the Father on Good Friday? Did the Father reject the Son on Good Friday? What is this really all about? You know, what Jesus is doing here, he's, he's quoting a line from the Old Testament, from the Psalms, from Psalm 22. He's quoting an oldie, a song that everyone in the first century would have been familiar with, but because we don't fill our minds with the scriptures that much, we may not really fully understand what that story is about. It'd be kind of like this, you know, if today in our culture you asked me, hey, Dr. Sri, what was your favorite band growing up? And I said, oh, I don't know, but it's a beautiful day and I still haven't found what I'm looking for and I'm still gonna keep talking like this with or without you. Well, if you know the rock band U2, you would know that I'm, I'm quoting you know, key lines from some of their most famous songs, but if you didn't know Bono and The Edge and the band U2, you would think I was just talking gibberish. You wouldn't know what I was, was talking about. Well, that's what happens when we don't understand the scriptures. We'll hear Jesus say something, but we don't fully understand what it means and we'll think, oh wow, Jesus was actually abandoned on Good Friday, but that's not the case. You see, he's quoting the opening line from this famous song, Psalm 22. And it's a psalm about a righteous man who's going through great suffering, great trials, a, a great persecution, and he feels as if he's being abandoned by God. And so he starts off, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But as the psalm goes on, you see very clearly he really does believe that God is present and that God is helping him. He says, it's basically like he's saying, I feel like I've been abandoned. And yet, Lord, whenever our ancestors were in trouble, they always turned to you. To you, they turned and they trusted. And they trusted in you. You never failed them. You never let them down. So you see him crying out in confidence that God is going to rescue him just like he rescued the ancient Israelites in their times of trouble. And, and the psalm goes on, and I, and I love how it gives some interesting details. You're going to love this here. It mentions how this righteous man, the kind of suffering he's going through, this is what happens, that people are mocking him, and they pass him by, and they wag their heads mocking him, and they pierce his hands and his feet, and, and people take his garments, and they cast lots as they divide the garments for uh, and decide who's going to get the garments. Does, does that sound familiar? That's all that happens on Good Friday. You see, Psalm 22 is a prophetic foreshadowing of what Jesus endures on the cross. Jesus is the righteous man going through great suffering, being persecuted, and people passing by Calvary, they're wagging their heads and they're mocking Jesus. And Jesus' hands and feet are pierced with the nails on the cross. And the soldiers divide Jesus' garments and cast lots for them, just like Psalm 22 foretold. I love how Psalm 22 ends, though. It ends with this confidence that God is going to come and rescue him and, it, and that the, the suffering that this man is going through is going to have meaning. It, it bears fruit for evangelization even. He says, you know, in the end, all the ends of the earth shall turn to the Lord. All the families of the earth are going to start to worship God. So, so that is not the cry of a man in despair. That is, that, that's the, the cry of a man with great confidence that even in this great darkness, God is still there and God will help him. That's certainly what happens with Jesus as he's there on the cross. He's entrusting himself to the Father's hands, trusting that even though he's, it's great darkness on Good Friday, that he's going to see the light on Easter Sunday and the Father is going to, to rescue him. He's going to raise himself from the dead. Now, I think there's some practical things we can take away. In the midst of our own trials and sufferings, in the midst of our own moments of darkness in life, we want to do what Jesus did. We want to turn to the scriptures. We want to do what the man in Psalm 22 did. He turned to the scriptures and looked to the past, the stories of God's faithfulness all throughout history with the, the people of Israel. We want to do the same. We want to remember when we face those trials, turn to the word of God, turn to the scriptures, trust and remember God's faithfulness and tell the Lord, Lord, this is hard. I feel as if you're not there. Where are you, God? That's okay. That's human. But always then fill your, fill your heart, fill your mind with the stories of the saints, the stories of scripture and God's faithfulness. The same God that rescued Israel 
in Egypt. In the same God that rescued the righteous man in Psalm 22, and the same Heavenly Father that, that rescued the Son on Easter Sunday, that same Father is present to you in the midst of your trials, and he's gonna help you and rescue you, comfort you, and help you to see the light even in the midst of this darkness.